So today I'm going to do what is probably going to be a fairly short session hacking on some code that is actually written in Rust this time. What we're going to take a look at is a bug that I filed against the Cargo Bitbake tool. So in previous video when I was writing some recipes for the RipGrep and Ox applications, both of which are written in Rust, I was using this Cargo Bitbake tool to generate the Oxo project recipes for those. So while I was working on those, I ran into an issue which I opened this bug report for on GitHub. So when we run Cargo Bitbake for certain projects where the description entry in the cargo.toml file is split over multiple lines, what we get out is a recipe that Bitbake can't pass. So if we take a quick look at this, um, in the cargo.toml file we can use these triple quotes to wrap a string and then the string can have new line characters within it. We can't do that in a Bitbake recipe. What we need to do is, as I've said here, we either need to shorten this summary, which is not something that's actually going to be very easy to do automatically, or we need to merge the description onto one line that is possible, but it would result in a pretty ugly looking recipe with a very, very long single line in it. Or what I would prefer in this case, which is we use line continuation characters at the end of each of those lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and modify the application so that whenever we see a new line in the description string, we're going to replace it with a backslash and then a new line. So let's flick over to Visual Studio Code where I have Cargo Bitbake itself checked out. And let's start off just by confirming that we can build this. So you want to do Cargo Build. And let us run through and build a local instance of Cargo Bitbake. So now I have this application built. I'm going to change directory because I have copy of ripgrep checked out here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the cargo bitbake tool so the binary ends up I believe it's in target directory so target debug cargo bitbake I'm going to run that in this ripgrep directory and it's going to look at the cargo.toml file that is here which has that multi-line description and we've not changed anything so we should see that it generates invalid metadata. But what we've got instead is this error here. So yes, what I need to do is run cargo bitbake with the bitbake argument. This is a little strange, but it's because usually this is invoked as a subcommand of cargo rather than being invoked directly. But as we've not installed it and we're just running it from this debug directory, we're going to need to pass that argument ourselves. So we've wrote a recipe. Let's take a look at it. So if I look through this and look for the summary line, we have this text here that caused an issue in Bitbake. And what we want to do is we want to add line continuation characters to each of these new lines. So we need to find the bit in the source code for cargo bitbake that generates the summary line and we need to modify it a bit. So that's what we're going to do now. So within cargo bitbake we've got a couple of different files. Let's start off with main.rs which is the kind of top level file for an application and I know that we have a main function which is where execution starts. What we're going to look for, we're just going to have a bit of a scroll around and get used to this file. So here we have an assignment for summary and this is probably going to be where we need to make a change to the code because we want to change what actually gets stored in this summary string. So let's just see where this is used. So coming further down here, 
we have this right macro being called which is picking up a template and filling in various things so we have this template here and I see what's happening so yeah we're writing out the summary variable within the single quotes after the summary assignment so yeah, if we change what gets stored in the summary variable, we should end up with something else being written out to the file, if that makes some sense. So let's go back to this main.rs and see where summary is assigned. So we're doing a few things here. We're using this map or else function. So this applies a function to the contained value if there is one or it computes a default if there isn't one so it's default first and then function the syntax feels a little confusing to me I would have expected function first then default but that's fine so the way this works is it tries to map this if there is a description because we get a reference to the description which then gives us it gives us an option so it gives us an option containing a reference to a description or the rust equivalent to none which is to say that there is no description in this case so depending on which of those happen, it will change which of these branches of code gets run. So if there is a description, we run this. If there is no description, we run this. Now, package.name I expect to be pretty simple. I don't expect in the fallback case where we use the package name that we're going to find new lines within the package name itself. So I think we can safely leave this branch alone as it is. I think what we want to look at is here. We are I'm not really familiar with why we create an interned string here. Not going to worry about that too much at this point. We're just going to look at this expression in the middle. So it's taking this string s which is passed in which is the description and it's calling trim on it to remove leading and trailing white space and then once we've got rid of that if we see any white space or if you see any new lines that are actually within the remaining body of the string after we've trimmed leading and trailing white space then we want to escape those so that bitbait can handle that string correctly in the generated recipe file. Let's get rid of this warning, we don't need that. So this is where I'm going to make a change and we're going to say when we see a new line we replace it with an escape character which is a backslash and then the new line. So what I did earlier is I looked up, let's find the right browser window and find this. I looked up what sort of function I can use to do this within Rust. So we do have a function called replace and this replaces matching substrings within a string with some new text. And it does this on substrings rather than characters. So as in this example we can actually look for multiple characters rather than just a single one. So the example replaces old with new in this string. So this is the right sort of invocation that we want. It's not going to modify the underlying string itself, it's going to return a new string. But that's fine because that's how trim is being used already. So let's say replace new line with a backslash and then a new line. 
So we go dot place new line with backslash and then a new line. And we're going to save that. And we have something wrong here. Mismatched types. So this replace function returns a struct string rather than a string slice. But strangely the trim function seems to replace a string slice. It seems to return a string slice. So yeah, trim returns a string slice probably because it's just returning a substring of the original string itself whereas oh, I've lost where I was, replace replace is actually going to have to allocate some new memory so we need to convert this string object into a and stir reference. So I think I can do that just by taking a reference to this string object here. I think I can just do that to take a reference and it has shut up the error that was being shown by the analyzer. So let's go back into cargo bit bay and see if this builds. I have some small confidence that it might build. So it has built. That's looking pretty good. And as we're using Rust here we can be fairly confident that we don't have a memory leak because this replace function does allocate some new memory. It's going to have to to store the modified string, but because of the ownership semantics, when this closure here actually exits, this is going to get deallocated. So we're fine with that. Rust is, as they say, pretty safe. So we have a binary. Let's go back to our ripgrep directory and run cargo bit bake again, regenerate this recipe and take a look at it. Interesting, so this is almost but not quite correct. So there's clearly a difference in how white space is handled between the cargo.toml file and a bit bake recipe. In the cargo.toml file these new lines are actually interpreted as white space within the string. In the bitbake recipe we're actually escaping them so that they're removed before we assign the string to the summary value. So we do need to put some extra white space back in here after we escape these. So we're going to change our code very slightly to replace this with a space, then a backslash, then a new line. Let's go back. Let's rebuild this. And let's go back to our rope directory, let's run this again. And let's take a look at our recipe now. This is looking good. This is how I wanted it to look. We've got line continuation characters with an extra space to separate the words after we've merged the lines. And this is something that Bitbake should be able to quite happily parse. So let's commit that change. So we need to go back to our cargo bit bake directory and we're just going to do a quick git diff to check that we've got the change we think we do. Yep, we're happy with that. We're going to add a file and we're going to commit our change. So let's take a look at what the expected format is for commit messages on this project probably going to be easiest to do this in a new terminal. 
Let's just do it straight and get the log on here. So these are fairly simple. We don't even have signed off by lines, but I am going to leave my signed off by line in. Um, we do use this sort of style here to refer to GitHub issues. So let's do that. So we're going to say, well, first of all, what's the GitHub issue? So the GitHub issue is this one, this is number 19. So let's say number 19 in here. So for the commit message, I'm just going to say that these changes will fix the summary for projects with a multi-line description. Let's commit that. So there are probably other things we can change within this code, but I want to keep it simple for now and just do one thing at a time. So now that we've fixed this issue and I've kind of off recording, compared the output to what I've done by hand and confirmed that I'm happy this is now doing the right thing. Um, what I want to do is open a pull request for this on the Cargo Bitbake project on GitHub. So I've got the Cargo Bitbake project open here in a web browser and what we need to do is create a fork of this so that we can push our change and open a pull request. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's creating a fork of this under my personal GitHub account here. And we're going to grab the SSH URL that we can use to push changes to this. We're going to switch the remote on here. So if I look at the rem remote-v, we see the URL for origin is the upstream and it's using HTTPS. We want to change that. So we want to set URL for origin to this SSH URL. And I usually just do a fetch to make sure everything's happy. Yep, it's accepting my key. So if I am one commit ahead of origin master, I should now be able to push this change. And it should appear on my fork of the project here. Cool, so I see that. And I want to create a pull request for this change. So happy with that description, happy with that. I don't need the sign off in the pull request summary itself. We're referencing the correct issue here. Look at our file that's changed. This looks pretty good. Let's create that pull request. So there we are, we've opened a pull request with our fix for the issue that I filed a couple of weeks ago. So that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like, uh, drop me some comments. It'd be great to know what sort of content you want to see. In the future, whether you want to see some more of the Rust language content or you want to see some more Yocto project videos, let me know and then I can make the sort of videos that folks are interested in. Um, also, give a subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when I post some new videos. So that's it from me. Until next time, thank you very much.